What's up, guys? Yesterday, I had a conversation with uh, a couple of my roommates where we were talking about, um, we got into the topic of art and how LA is kind of leading the way in a lot of different areas with art um, based on this, there's this uh, piece going up at the LACMA where they're just taking a giant stone and putting it at LACMA. And the entire city is supporting this and they have to shut down areas of the freeway, they have to have um, a, a crew come in and cut down telephone poles and then put them back up as the piece is brought in. It's, um, although everyone, you know, says no one cares about art and the government will never support it, um, this is kind of the opposite of that logic where um, the government cares so much about an art piece that they're removing power to um, certain areas of the city at certain times to bring this art piece in and probably to bring it out as well. I don't know what they're going to do with it on the way out, um, but it's really interesting to me. So uh, coming, coming along those lines, we started talking about how uh, graffiti um, kind of started in L.A., in one way or another. I mean, you can't say where graffiti started, but um, decades before it started in New York, uh, gang graffiti was huge in LA. And then uh, it also was institutionalized in LA, so it entered the history books in LA as well. Um, and I was talking about how I was, you know, in my neighborhood, I live in this one, I mean, if this is downtown, then you go any way in this direction. We live right on the corner, and then any way in this direction is nice. And you see a bunch of street art, and there's Shepherd Ferries, and there's Banksies, and there's all this pretty little art. However, all the other three directions, if you were to go, if you go south, um, Skid Row, if you go east, East LA, if you go even north and just like slightly to the side, uh, where I went yesterday, there's gang graffiti everywhere. And so, um, you got to, I mean, when I think of that, I think, okay, I'm not going to put anything there because those guys are, I mean, putting up art in a place where there's gang graffiti is like asking for it. And so, um, I know not to, however, I was talking to my roommate Lonnie and he was saying, um, he, I mean, he doesn't do graffiti himself, but he much prefers going to those areas because he, like a lot of people um, in L.A. or just a lot, of, a lot of artists in general, he uh, despises the street art movement. Um, he, he's not a fan of Shepard Ferry or, or Banksy or, or people like that, and uh, he likes art with a purpose, like, like uh, gang graffiti. It's, it's, it's um, I, I must sound so ignorant talking about gang graffiti right now, but... Uh, its purpose is to say, like, this is our area, you know, stay out. It's just, it's a message, and it has a lot of purpose, and going over someone is another message that also has a lot of purpose. And so as we were talking about this, um, we reached the opposite side of that spectrum, which is uh, the people who go over, like, government-employed people who go over um, graffiti, like, paint over it on the wall with shades of gray or whatever they have to do, or, like, power wash it off the wall. And... He said that he really enjoys them as artists as well. He thinks that they have a really great purpose, which is to clean it up. And so the three of us had all seen this little mini documentary about how those guys are modern artists and comparing them to like Rothko and Piet Mondrian and all these um, famous New York school artists who... I'm just going to keep talking despite the trucks. Um, comparing these guys to all these famous New York, New York school artists who were thinking really, really hard about those minimalistic ideas and these guys don't think about it at all they usually just go out and they're getting paid whatever 12 bucks an hour to go out and just like paint over um, graffiti on the walls and they just go out every day into their job they're just doing it because they want money and they're just trying to match the gray tone that's beneath it as best they can and so this is something that I've always been interested in I mean that minimalist stuff is my favorite art in the world there's a guy named mobster who has his his and he, he does series where he's interacting with those guys where he'll go up to a wall that's white and paint like a really light shade of gray on it with some kind of message and then they'll paint over it and then he'll say oh is this shade okay in a different shade of gray um, and then they'll paint over that and say no what about this one they'll paint over that as well and then eventually he'll just say I give up and just paint something in like a bright color um, and those that interaction is something that's really always interested me if I w were to uh, go to um, get a master's degree in art history, my thesis would be about that. Um, I really I really wonder, I mean, I'm not in a place right now where I can pursue such a huge endeavor on, on finding out the answers to these questions, but I really wonder who is it that says, well, let me, let me start here. If you're going to put art up in a gallery, the people who are at the head, at the top of the gallery, whether it's the 
the person who is going out and finding the art themselves or just the person who's saying, yeah, you're allowed to put the, this art on the wall. Um, like we have friends who will say, oh, my friend is a, we have people here who will say, my friend is a really great artist and I want to put his art in the gallery. However, it takes a team of us who are qualified to say, no, that art's not good enough to go on these walls, or if it is, then we have to put it over here, we have to put this over here, and it's this huge, long decision on saying, like, this art goes on the walls. This art is worth existing in our gallery, and this art is not. However, street art is this, it's the most happening thing in the art world right now, and the people who are deciding whether street art should exist or should not exist are not the same people who are deciding whether street art should be in a gallery or should not be in a gallery. So street art in its purest form is on the street and it's expressing itself in this really, I mean, in order to, to do street art, you have to, you have to really, really care enough to express yourself. It's like, it, it's a pretty pure form of expression, which is why people are really latching onto it right now, because you're risking a lot to go put your art out on the walls. So you can put it up in, in a gallery, whatever, that's fine. And the people who are allowing you to put this up in the gallery are making the decisions to say, oh, this is worthy of being in a gallery. However, being on the street is even purer than being in a gallery. And the people who are deciding that something can be on the street are not the same people who are qualified to decide what art is. So um, I've, I've seen video of a guy who is painting over, hopefully I can find this and link it to you guys, but he's painting over, he's, he's hired to paint over tags. So he's going out and he's painting over tags. He actually goes over like a throw up and uh, he's, he's painting over it and right next to it is a street art piece. I think it was a Banksy, but I'm not, I can't really remember. And he leaves that there. And uh, you know, there's Banksy's now where people put, where the government will put plexiglass over it, leave it there, and then other people will come over and tag it. And the, the reason why is because it's like some important aspect of their culture. However, they think that the tag that they clean off of it is not an important aspect of their culture. So the people who are making the decisions to paint over this are certainly not qualified to be making those decisions. And I wonder when it's going to come to the point that we demand qualifications of those people um, and how we would even get to that point. I wonder if we will ever even get to that point where we, where we decide that the person who has to um, has to make the decision between art and graffiti, which for some reason people think are two separate things, um, when they need to go through some kind of qualification process to make that decision. Um, so I'd love to make, I don't know, a documentary or something where I just go up the list, up the chain of command, and eventually get to the person who passes down the law and says, you paint over this and you don't paint over that. Um, when they, When I've seen those people interviewed, they just say, if it looks like dirty or if it looks um, unattractive, then you have to go over it. But if it's pretty and it's an art piece, then it can stay on the walls. And I wonder where those decisions are made. If it's just some some piece, like a, a burner that someone threw up, then uh, I feel like a lot of those get painted over because they, uh, while it took a long time, it looks really street or it looks really graffiti. However, um, some Banksy where there's like a stenciled guy throwing a bouquet of flowers like a grenade, um, I don't know, it's witty. It looks like an art piece that you could see in a gallery, so it gets to stay there. Uh, I don't know, I wonder those things. And uh, if you guys have any kind of experience in that, um, I'll, I'll, link to, I'll link the video to you if I can find it in the description. But uh, I don't know, what do you guys think about that? Let's start a conversation in the comments.